I do want to start off by kind of giving a background on your nonprofit, Sundara, and uh, what issues you're looking to kind of tackle. Yeah, of course. So um, I started Sundara uh, seven years ago, and the impetus to um, starting this whole organization really came from um, two events. One happened when I was 19. I spent a few months in India, in Mumbai, and I was living at an orphanage and I met this girl who was 10 years old and when she was seven, um, her mother actually lit herself on fire um, and died because she found out that her father had many other wives and children. And so this girl, uh, when she was seven, her name was Priyanka, she was sent to uh, live with her grandmother who then sold her to traffickers. and. Uh, she was trafficked over the border with Nepal, um, I believe 30 times before the age of 10. And then she came to this orphanage that I was volunteering at and we had this uh, older sister, younger sister relationship and I would braid her hair every morning and she was convinced that I could tell the future. Um, so I gave her some ideas of what she could be when she grew up. and. Uh, a few months later, I went back to school. I was at the University of Michigan and I had found out that she had died of HIV, this girl that I was friends with. And uh, I think that as a college student, I was very um, naive about how the world worked. And I thought that if you work hard, you can do incredible things. Um, but I think through spending a few months in Mumbai at that age, I realized that um, the world is inherently unfair and that I was very privileged to have parents that prioritized my education and my health and sent me to college and not everyone is so lucky um, and we can feel guilty about that or we can do something with our relative privilege to help even the playing field for people that aren't so lucky and so fortunate. Um, so that's my first story and then my second story sort of relates to that because after I got graduated um, from university, I, like many, um, many university students, had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, but I remember that story and I remember thinking, how is it that in this day and age there can be children who are trafficked around the world for sex? So I moved to Thailand after I graduated and um, I was working for the better part of a year in the north of Thailand um, and we would uh, work with children who were at risk of being trafficked or some of them who have been trafficked but were now being rehabilitated. It was there that I met children who didn't know what soap was. I'd go into their schools and um, sometimes there were sinks, sometimes there was not running water, um, but there was no soap and that really um, stuck out to me because if you go to Bangkok, there are thousands and thousands of hotels and I knew that every day these hotels were throwing away bars of soap. What if we could get these bars of soap that normally just go straight into landfills to people in the villages like the one I was in um, and train them about basic uh, hand hygiene, body hygiene, menstrual hygiene, things like that. Um, and so I'd say a combination of these two stories really brought me to where I am today. Uh, I started Sundara shortly after my time in Thailand. And what we do is we take soap that's used from hotels um, and we chemically reprocess it into new soap. And we hire women who are single mothers, widows, survivors of domestic violence, and we give them fair wage jobs. And they also go through a two month training to become a hygiene ambassador. And they train about hand hygiene, body hygiene, cuts, burns, scrapes, basic first aid uh, to their community and really become like hygiene ambassadors in the process. Um, and that is really what we seek to tackle. So we seek to tackle um, the problem of waste and soap waste in particular, not getting to the need. It's estimated that 70 million people in India do not have access to soap even once a month. Um, and then we also really try and tackle um, employment issues. Uh, you know, here in the US, um, women are still making around 80 cents to the dollar, I believe. But in a country like India, 
um, the gender gap is far worse when you look at the employment sector. And so um, I see my job as um, offering employment opportunities to women who otherwise wouldn't have them. So you talked a little bit about chemically cleaning the soaps. Could you kind of break down the process of how the new bar and soap are created and if sanitized properly? Yeah, of course. Um, it's actually super easy to do. Um, and we do the entire process in less than seven minutes. Um, so you just imagine a bar of soap that comes from a hotel after, you know, two or three uses. Um, you have the bar of soap and you take off the outside and you can do it with um, a, some, something as simple as like a carrot peeler or a vegetable grater. Um, and we remove the outside of the bar of soap, we set that aside, um, and then we take the inside of the bar of soap and we grind it down. Um, then we mix this powdered um, grated soap with vegetable glycerin, coconut oil, um, some powdered bleach for sanitizing purposes, and then it becomes a bit of a paste. Sometimes we add in a little bit of like distilled water as well. Now it becomes more like pizza dough, I would say. Um, and it goes to a processing machine where we simply um, press out bars of soap. And we also have our soap tested in labs in India and also in Singapore um, to make sure that there's no mold or pathogens so that the quality is um, such that I'd use it myself. And I actually do often bring soap back for myself and for my friends. And it's something that I'm proud to use because I don't think I would want to really distribute soap that I wouldn't use myself. Um, so how successful has Sundara been in kind of spreading hygiene awareness throughout these communities and kind of uplifting all these women from poverty? It's kind of like your biggest accomplishment so far. Yeah, um, where I see our real success is in empowering women. Um, when you give a woman a job, you notice that so many other things in her life improve. She feels like she has a real community. Um, you see even like, you notice small things like her voice gets louder, her posture improves. And then we see much bigger things like uh, she's able to send her children to school because she can afford to buy them a uniform. Um, we've had women go on to work in the police force uh, to run for uh, their version of like district council and I think I look at those as a part of our success too, because um, I just want to be someone that believes in other people, women especially, and gives them confidence to um, know that if they have a dream, they can go on and do that too. Um, and so I really see where our success is, is creating this environment where we support our employees and support their dreams, even when they go beyond um, soap recycling. Um, so what are some of the challenges that you face throughout your journey? I know COVID-19 is obviously a big challenge right now. Yeah. What are the challenges that you've kind of been facing and how have you tackled those issues so far? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, it's pretty challenging to work 7,000 miles away from where you live. Um, and so I have gotten to travel to India a lot, um, but ultimately I don't live there. And it's such a challenge to find people who believe in your work as much as you do and will be motivated to work for you. So that's been a challenge. I've been really fortunate to find some great people along the way. Um, but yeah, that's a big one. So what are your future plans? Where, where are you headed from now on? And how are you looking to reach as many people as you can next year? Yeah, for sure. So we're actually doing something super exciting. Uh, our website launches uh, June 1st, and we have a new program. It's called Rise by Sundara. And what we are doing is we are giving seed grants and mentorship to um, women especially, but we also are supporting women, uh, sorry, we're also supporting men who, um, you know, have like a, a female empowerment angle in their work. Um, and we're trying to support these entrepreneurs who have ideas on how to improve water, sanitation, hygiene in their own communities. Um, I want to be um, supporting other entrepreneurs who might have ideas but are a little scared to test it out or need a little bit of money or need someone to mentor them. Um, and I feel like I've gone from this space of what can I get to what can I give other people? Um, and so I'm really excited about that. 
uh, you should check out our website. It's going to launch June 1st and we will be taking in applications for the next few months. Um, and I'm really excited about this new program. It's called Rise by Sundara. So do you have any advice for people that are probably looking to give back to society in meaningful ways? Or is there something they could do to support your initiative as well? Something I've realized in the last few months especially is that you can do these like grand big things, start a company, start a nonprofit. Um, and that's all really nice. But the thing that I have gotten a lot of enjoyment out of is just doing like random acts of kindness for um, people that I see. I'm, I'm fortunate or unfortunate enough, depending on how you look at it, to live in New York right now. And the city is hit so hard by this pandemic. And I see and feel a lot of suffering around me. And I've just made this commitment to um, helping people wherever I can. Um, and it's not in the structure of an organization, but it's like, take $20 and give it to someone who needs it or buy something for my doorman or um, call up a, someone I'm not really close to and tell them that I love them and I care about them. Um, I think there's a lot of power in these everyday actions. Um, I talk with my life coach a lot about, you know, who are you being, not what are you doing? And I think that if you carry yourself with kindness and generosity in any sort of job or any sort of situation, people notice. And that's something that I am trying to carry with me, especially now. Another, another like piece of advice is um, try and find the couple things that make you feel really alive. I think there's a lot of people that go through life doing things because their parents told them to or living a script that was written for them because my culture says I need to do this. I need to be a doctor. I need to be a lawyer. I need to make money. But like, have you ever examined why? Like, is it because your mom always told you that you had to do that? Or is it because all your friends are doing that? But like, what do you actually want? So spend some time in some silence Try and like disconnect and really like get in tune with the times in your life where you felt like really happy and where you felt like time has stopped. Um, because I think for me, a happy life is like getting as close as possible to those moments. Um, and everyone has like something different that makes them happy and alive. Um, but finding that one is really like a key thing. I wish I found mine earlier, but just the fact that I found mine is like a privilege for sure. Um, as to how you can help, um, of course, we're always in need of donations. So if you have any ability now, um, please do donate on our website, sindarafund.org. And if you can't, just follow us on social media. And if you know of any incredible entrepreneurs in your life, or if that's you, um, send us an application and talk to us. We're like really excited to see how we can use our skills and our connections and our money to help great people out there. Um, I think the world really needs great innovations right now. Um, and I'm excited to play some part in other people's journey. So do you have any last words, something you want to share about your experience or like your greatest takeaways from Sundara after starting Sundara? I think we often um, take our power away from ourselves. We often say, you know, I could never do that. I could never start a company. I could never um, find a loving relationship. I could never live in that place. Um, but we take away the dream before it's ever really taken away from us. Um, so I would say as much as you can, like take back your power um, because I think the world needs a lot more of that right now. And what we are seeing is that our traditional systems of government, of business, are really not designed to protect us. Um, and that's why people like you um, and people the world over need to really question like, why is the world the way it is? And why is there so much inequality? And what can I focus on? I don't think 
one person can fix everything, but one person can do something small really well and inspire someone else to do something really well. And I do think that when that is combined, it really changes um, the game for so many of us. Yeah, I think that's what I would leave you with. And just to know that it's been a privilege to do this. I recognize that not everyone has the ability to start a company or start a nonprofit. I'm fortunate that I didn't have a ton of student loans to pay off or children to take care of. Um, but if you do have that ability and that freedom, why not give it a shot? And my grandmother said to me, she's like, what you keep for yourself dies with you and what you give away to others lives on. And she wasn't like, she was a school teacher. She was wonderful. She was friends with everyone at Costco, but like, she wasn't this person you'd read about in the New York Times. And yet at her funeral, so many people showed up and you know, hundreds of people just wrote things, how she impacted them. And I realized it was because she had this like deep generosity and those things really like stayed with the world long after she was gone. So I felt like that gave me this like pretty cool roadmap on how to live. And it's hard when you have Instagram and you see everyone like flexing and looking cool, but you have to remind yourself like, maybe this isn't like the most important thing right now. Mm -hmm. For sure. All right, thank you. Of course, it was great chatting with you and enjoy the rest of your, your day. I hope it's nice there. It's nice here. It is nice, yeah. Yeah. All right, sounds good. Bye. Bye.